Line up! Well, we just left our house for, I don't know, who knows how long, at least a month and a half. And, uh, yeah, it's weird. Because we didn't yeah. move. Yeah, like all our stuff is, <laughs> I mean, all our furniture and stuff we don't need is still in the house. Which so, kind of says a lot about how people live in their houses. I've, yeah, I've always thought so we lived much. like goldfish and whatever space you have, you'll fill. And then when you fill that too much, you buy a new place that's bigger and we just perpetuate that cycle. But we just moved into our new RV and we're going on the road for, again, just a few months until we come back and try to either set this up for Airbnb or uh, just rent it. The easier thing to do would be to rent it. The more lucrative thing to do is Airbnb it if you can keep it full. So it's kind of a toss up. Do you go for the safe, uh, basic rent bet where we don't really make any money we just cover our mortgage which is great or do you try to make three grand a month which is what airbnb will do for you <laughs> yeah uh, ours is um we have hoa restrictions that require 30 limit stay so yeah 30 day or 30 day stay yeah. so i'm not yeah. it seems like that would be a hard a hard customer to find but we right. can try and see how it goes all right well i need to put my sunglasses on so yeah. i'm sure we'll have some more on this very first real trip. We've taken the RV out two times before. That was more of a shakedown, but this is loaded up and 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 leaving for real. Yeah, like it's a house now, not just a vacation right. vehicle. Right, right. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so we're at our last night at the San Benito RV Park and Resort, a thousand trails property. Mm -hmm. Although it says open to the public on the signs. I don't know what that means. I guess you just pay a reserve or something. I do actually know what that means because when I was reserving this through a thousand trails, a couple times I happened to not be registered or logged in using my membership and it wanted to send me to an outside website to book. So you could potentially book here through like a partner website that they have. I don't remember what it's called, but if you aren't a member, then you can book through that secondary website mm -hmm. don't remember what the fees were but i think it was fairly comparable to like a, a typical rv park fees wise. Okay. and you can camp here if you have a tent or an rv or a trailer um they basically let any form of camping happen and here cottages oh yeah and cottages and yeah. and like some of them are like three bedroom like you can yeah. sleep like quite a few people here so so we have categories that pretty much cover all this. Yes. So let's just go over those. Rachel's got them on her phone here. Okay. So the first category is the uh, grounds and amenities. And, and we're rating this one to five. Yeah. With five being the best. Yeah. So we've decided to give the grounds here a two out of five. And the reason for that is we did do a little bit of walking around. And you can tell that this is a property that is not really kept up as well as it could be. Mm -hmm. Now, disclaimer, we're here right at the tail end of COVID times. So or the beginning of COVID times, depending on how well, you look at it. Well, the tail end of phase one of COVID times, there might be a phase two coming, we don't really know. But um, it, it's June 25th. Yes. So um, it looks like a, some of the things might not have been like fully opened for the season because they're not giving out horseshoes for the horseshoe. Um, yeah, but like the horseshoe area and the mini golf and stuff like that just right. doesn't look very well kept it's up. It's super overgrown. It yeah. looks like... It doesn't look like a season's worth of deterioration. Right. Like it definitely needs like a paint job and yeah. somebody to go through and do some landscaping and stuff. So like I would not want to play mini golf on the mini golf course because your ball is not going to be able to shoot straight at all. So 
Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to go with the two. I mean, the roads are pretty nice and pretty easy to drive on. With our little um, C-Max, we were able to drive fine on the roads. So yeah. that is nice, and they're wide open and everything. But the, like, getting down into the specifics of the area, it just looks like this place could use a little bit of TLC. I guess just for me, there's just a lot of potholes, and it's just not tidy. I just expect things to be tidier. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. And maybe we'll find as we go to more of these campgrounds that this is more the norm or average than low. And mm -hmm. we should have rated it higher. But this is our first one we've been to. So we'll, you know, take that with a grain of salt. This is our first Thousand Trails yeah. campground. So take that for what yeah. it is. So then um, the next rating we have is for our specific site that we have. Um, and that would be like how level it is, how the hookups are. Um, location and all that stuff and we've given that a four um it's pretty nice we're pretty level here um the hookups work pretty well we, yeah, yeah. All, all the sites seem pretty level the hookups are easy mm -hmm. uh it didn't get a five because uh i figure when they say full hookups from what i've seen full hookups now again lack of experience here but to mm -hmm. me full hookups in the past has meant um obviously water sewer power and cable like park cable like like you know cable tv this doesn't have cable tv so i couldn't rate it the highest because it just doesn't have that and i don't know if it has it in some places and not others but definitely doesn't have it right here and also the sewer connection like the pipe is down in but the thing that you screw into the pipe that i screw into for the sewer uh connection is just like falling apart mm -hmm. i mean we managed to get it so there isn't black tank water flowing all over the place <laughs> which is nice but mm -hmm. aside from that um and again it goes down to the uh um to the niceness of it there's like railroad ties around the thing and it just doesn't look tidy like nobody really maintains it ever mm -hmm. um and i just you know there's little pieces of wood and stuff other campers have left and it's just like you know come on clean up a little, a little bit yeah and i will say one thing to note about this campground and we're not taking any points off for this because this is totally our fault but the sun is like so key here pay attention to the direction that the other motorhomes motor homes are parked in because you do not want your door facing the direction that the sun is heading. You do not want it facing west. Especially which, if your awning's broken. Especially if your awning's broken, like ours is. So that was a mistake we made. Had we faced the other direction, we would be much more comfortable in the afternoon. But we just, we were just kind of frazzled when we got here and just trying to find a spot. And we just sort of pulled in to the first one that looked open and good. And there's zero shade around us, which we expected because there were no tree sites available. So that Again, not going to take points off for that. Like, there's trees, some spots, other spots don't have them, and that's fine. But we could have parked in a way that would have shaded ourselves better. So, because it simply just turned around and parked over there. Yeah, exactly. Like this guy did. Yeah, like if we had parked in the spot right next to us, we would have been yeah. way better off. So, um, I think I was very focused on not being too close to other people because I didn't want to be rude. But actually, what you need to do is make sure that you are facing the right direction and then you're not going to be up in other people's spaces anyway because, like, right. your, your two hookup sides are together, not your door sides. So, anyway. Along the lines yeah. of hookups, they do have tons of, and we'll talk about this later, but they have tons of 50-amp sites and 30-amp sites. Mm -hmm. And then they have sites that don't have power at all. They just have, like, water and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. but they've got a, a definitely a big variety of uh, hookups here. Yeah, well, let's do that one next. Let's go yeah. to availability of sites next, basically. So we're going to give that a five, actually. Cause... Only because this place has like 500 sites. Well, it does have like 500 sites. <laughs> and we are here in June, so you would think it would be more crowded. Um, but it's... I think people come here to escape other people yeah. in the world because it's kind of remote here so it's not as crowded as, as it could be and there's a lot of sites so well and keep in mind too there's there's maybe um i, I didn't do the math but i think there's less than 100 uh 50 amp sites and yeah. then there's a certain number of 30 amp sites and peppered throughout there's kind of the random tent site that just like wasn't big enough for an rv so they made it a tent site mm -hmm. and but there's also like first off i mean with I guess with hookups, people aren't running their generators, but if there was an issue, they would run their generators. And it's like, I don't want to be in a tent next to a bunch of generators running. But mm -hmm. like across from us, there's a, a whole tent compound right there. Mm -hmm. um, so they do kind of gather them up that way. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of different types of sites. And yeah. you know, you got to look at 
there's might be 500 sites here, but if you're looking for a 50 amp site, you got to call ahead yeah. and make sure that they have them available. Because it is wide open and we were able to find the site with no problem, of course, but the 50 amp area, because it's all clustered together, is the more crowded section because yeah. most newer RVs seem to have 50 amp power. So There's a lot of them here anyway. Yeah. And yeah, a lot here. So, and there's a lot of people that seem to be, um, like seasonal, like they come here, they have reserved sites. So all the good mm -hmm. sites, like the good shady sites are reserved by people who come every year or whatever. So right. we were kind of stuck out in the open, but that's okay. Um, okay. So the next thing we have is the wildlife and scenery. And we have given this one a four. Cause... Yeah. Cause nobody's perfect, <laughs> but, uh, it's really in a beautiful area. It's it in is. the typical Central Valley Highlands, um, just on the other side of Monterey. And a lot of those golden hills you get in California with yeah. the green pinion um, and, uh, and and other trees peppered throughout. And it's just a, oh, it's really pretty. It's a nice drive out here. Yep. Kind of. It's not a super great drive in a big RV because <laughs> the road is pretty bad. And the, uh, the potholes and everything, I mean, you really got to take it slow. The... The road right into the campground is super steep with a really sharp uh, hairpin. So keep that in mind if you're pulling a big long trailer. I mean, there's huge fifth wheels in here, so it's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine it's uh, super uh, easy and unstressful. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, yeah, the scenery is, it's its a pretty area. It's dead here. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no cars going by. There's no anything. You've so gotta, quiet. Yeah, you got to be able to, even the road that's out there, even if we were close to the road that was access, there's never any cars on it. No, it's yeah. very quiet, very secluded. I think there's some like wineries and stuff around here, but like it's right. It's very quiet, and there's there's wild pigs, which Plus or pigs. maybe feral pigs. Let's call them feral pigs. There's pigs. We saw. They're so cute. We love them. <laughs> was it was it this morning or yesterday when we saw like fifteen of them run yeah. by? Like yeah, a whole posse like of last them. night, like in in the evenings and in yeah. the mornings when you're likely to see them. Um, and they definitely travel in a group. They're, they're really cute. Plus deer. We saw tons of deer. Yeah, tons Little of Little baby ones. Yeah, we're at the right time of year for babies. So there's yeah. so that's pretty cool. babies out. There's squirrels everywhere. I mean, they call themselves kind of a, not really a nature preserve, but it definitely is kind of a back to nature area, which is probably mm -hmm. why it's not over groomed, which maybe is just my preference. I, I don't, you know, I prefer something that's a little more tidy like i said but mm -hmm. um they even they even mentioned that you're supposed to dump your tanks on the way and there's a dump station right at the front and you're supposed to dump your tanks because they don't want you dumping in case you had chemicals Chemical. or something in your yeah. tanks um they want all natural stuff so yeah. don't use any of those while you're sitting here in your sites and yeah. then because it dumps into groundwater yep so so local activities um how many of them there are proximity that's gonna be our next rating and <laughs> I mean, it's a two, but that's only because we're so far from everything. Yeah. If there were more things open here, you'd probably have a little that's, different opinion on that. That's true. Again, COVID times, the yeah. on-site amenities are mostly closed right now. So we're, lo we're talking about off-site amenities, which would be, you know, local wineries, towns with restaurants and yeah. stores and whatever and then also any like attractions in the area and while there is all that stuff it's very small and very far away there's one little town what's up no. tres pinos yeah tres pinos. uh they have a bar well, wait wait before that there is I don't even uh, know what it's Pis called. Pisces? Yeah, it's yeah. a tiny little thing. It's basically an intersection with one building. Yeah. But that building has cold beer and hot burritos, apparently. So, I mean, what else do you need? I mean, come on. Yeah, we never Quit tried it. I know. And there's <laughs> apparently like three wineries, according to a sign, that are past the park entrance. Yeah. So we didn't get a chance to go to those either. Yeah. So those kinds of things, if you're going to be here for a while, uh, and it's not during coronavirus times when they might be closed anyway. Yeah. You know, are, are good, fun things to do. Um, yeah, definitely Pinnacles, explore it. Pinnacles National Park is just south of here, maybe like less than 20 miles, but you can't get in on this side. You got to go up and around. It's like an hour yeah. and a half to the park entrance. Like you can see the mountains that Pinnacles are in from here, but yeah. you can't get there unless you go all the way around. It's supposed so, to be condors and stuff there. That would have yeah, been super cool to see. We just didn't have been time. Very cool. Yeah, Hollister but, is the nearest decent sized town, and that's what, 20 miles away? Mm -hmm. Monterey is an hour and a half, an hour yeah. and 10 minutes. Santa um, Cruz is probably about the same. Yeah, now that little town, Tres Pinos, which is like probably 15 minutes from here, 
has what looked like two pretty hopping restaurants. I mean, for the area, mm -hmm. it might be all people from here. I don't know, but there was at least one that looked nice and was full of people despite social distancing. Mm -hmm. And another one that I think is called The Hole, and on their sign it says booze and food. But it does look kind of nice Again, inside. Again, what else do you need? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> So, yeah. so, so there's the, definitely things. There there are things to do in the area, but they're very small. Yeah. And especially right now, it just didn't seem like something we were interested in exploring. So that's why right. we did give it a two. Right. All right, connectivity. Oh my God. Wi Fi. I'll let you I'll let you take this one. So <laughs> for my for me to be able to do my work and for us to be able to live on the road. I have to be able to work during the day. My mm -hmm. job is remote, and for that remoteness, um, at least two days out of the week, I have to be on Zoom calls pretty much all day long. And the rest of the time, I'm working on configuring software and uploading podcasts and things like that that all requires some level of internet. Now, the software I'm working on can be shaky internet. That's fine. I'm just, I'm just every time I hit save on the page, it has to reload. But that's not a big a deal. It's not a lot of data packets. But trying to do podcasting and things like that, trying to upload videos like this, it's just, it's impossible. So we looked, um, US Cellular has no service. Sprint has very little. Um, Verizon has some. We've got a MiFi that says 4G LTE with three out of five bars most of the time. And that's mm -hmm. with a little um, antenna extender or booster, I guess. And uh, and that's that's what I've been using to to do big things and to like on a zoom call i'll use the park wi-fi for the actual zoom call and then i'll connect to my um to the audio through the mi-fi by connecting my phone to the mi-fi and then making a phone call mm. using that and that seems to work okay but if you've got at&t there are no bars no, no service nothing nothing at all that's at &T. But that's and that's not something at&t users are unused to hearing though well and let's not forget the big thing that was like pretty disappointing to me although i shouldn't have been so disappointed because every other youtube video we've ever watched said this but they have park wi-fi here and we saw that and we we're like okay they have it let's try it 20 bucks for two weeks no big deal okay let's pay that does it work no now here's here's the thing why did we even pay 20 dollars? i mean 20 dollars for two weeks we probably got 20 dollars worth for two really? weeks. I never got it to connect to any I mean, of my devices, not once. I w I've been doing those Zoom calls with the screen share on, on Park Wi-Fi. Really? Yeah, well, so... it works a little better for you. Depends again, on your device. Some devices will connect better than others, so... Yeah, it totally yeah. does. And here's the thing I don't get, too. Like, we're surrounded by people. First off, they had different routers for different areas, you know, different mm -hmm. repeaters. I'm willing to bet they're all going out the same pipe, though. So they're just splitting bandwidth amongst 500 sites. Again, we're pretty remote here, so... Yeah. But our expectations should have been low to begin with. Right. But, you know, and park Wi-Fi is never good. Yeah. But here's the thing, like in the evening when it really goes down, I'm wondering why. Because if people are I mean the let's be honest, the type of people that are here, they're definitely not like sitting on their phones all night. Well their iPads, I think there's pigs outside. Yeah, I hear them. Yeah. But they're definitely not sitting down just doing that. They're more than likely not streaming because almost literally everyone around us has a satellite dish. Like yeah. everyone around us has yeah, a satellite dish. Satellite dishes. So they're all watching TV on that. And I'm like, who's taking up the bandwidth? Or is it just that bad? Is it just that crappy to begin with? It doesn't work well in the morning or the afternoon. There doesn't seem to be a time that works well. So yeah. so we gave it a one. Yeah. But that's that's a combination of Wi-Fi and cell service. Yeah. And um, I think, uh, again, maybe as we gain more experience you know, the experience here was more average than it's not. I don't know. That doesn't mean it's good, but we have to we have to adjust these and, and assess them based on what mm -hmm. the norm is, you know, and if the norm yeah. is garbage then our our rating system will change. Yeah. So Yeah. I mean I agree. It's not great and we will probably not choose this campground again mostly because of the connectivity issues. Yeah. We've really blown through our MiFi allotment for the month um, yeah. because of being here. So Now, there were a couple nights when we just blew through Netflix on, on the MiFi, which probably wasn't the best plan. But it was a terrible plan, actually. 
but we've got <laughs> we've got on this stint we've only got about another six days yeah. of being out and then we're gonna be at my parents house where we're definitely pirating their wi-fi so i know but you're like yeah. assuming that they have good wi-fi oh they so. have good wi-fi we've been there yeah <laughs> my dad likes to play video games and stream yeah, stuff yeah, so yeah. i know yeah. they have good wi-fi yeah cool. yeah all right what's next all right no that's it that is oh. all of our ratings so uh 23 so, out of 35 23 out of 35 yeah so that's a little higher than average yeah i think yeah. that is a i think it's a fair assessment yeah. i love i love how um remote it is i guess or back to nature it is mm -hmm. i love how quiet it gets like when we go to bed you know 10 11 o'clock it's just like completely dead silent here it's super dark and i love feeling super disconnected from the rest of the world but then at like two o'clock in the afternoon, I don't like being so disconnected from the rest of the world because I want to watch some Netflix or something and I can't. So yeah, I mean yeah. our ratings, our ratings are based on being able to work here mm -hmm. and and being able to to connect here and do things here. And from a standpoint of living on the road, right? We're not here for a vacation. If you came here for a week long vacation or two week long vacation, it's probably exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. You know, you don't need the Wi-Fi. You no. don't need any of that to work, and you want the you want the remoteness. Yep. You don't care about driving an hour and a half to the national park, mm -hmm. and it's going to be great. So. Yeah, we were we're kind of hoping to find parks where we can, you know, do a quick jaunt in the evening to somewhere cool. We did go to Monterey today, but like we left at what one? Yeah. So we spent the whole afternoon. Yeah. And evening. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only way that really works. Oh, plus it's stupid hot here in June right now. Like it's ninety today. <laughs> Look, we and, listen. We parked badly. I no, it's not about the parking. It's ninety here. Yeah. And an hour away in Monterey it was sixty four. So I mean, Monterey is a coastal town. It's in a little harbor. Mm -hmm. I get it, but it's amazing how much just going over those couple sets of hills will change things. So That's it's definitely hot. Temperature. But it's it's kind of like high desert too. There's about a 40 degree temperature swing. Like it'll get down into the 50s at night and we just instead of running any air, we'll just open up the coach like it is now. Yeah. And uh in our bedroom, we've got little windows next to our heads. Yeah. Ice machine. And uh <laughs> We got pigs over here. We got ice back here. We got little <laughs> windows next to our heads, and that just yeah, it's in the fifties right now. It's it's nice, totally comfortable. When it's coming in, it's nice. The coach yeah. is a little bit stuffy right now because we've been gone all day. But yeah, um, when it's coming in, it's really nice. Yep. So yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's 23 it. Twenty-three out of thirty-five for this park, and our next stops are uh, two Harvest Host stops, which hopefully we can review, and mm. another thousand trail spot. Yep. So there we go. Yeah, there you yeah. go. And if you want one of these because I know it's in frame. Uh, <laughs> check out Woods Manor Gifts on Facebook or on, uh, I think he has a website. So Woods and Manor Gifts. Too. Yeah. And he'll yep. do stuff to order. Like he made these based on the colors that we wanted. Mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty good stuff. Yep. So here's one super cool thing about the car that we got to uh, tow around with us, although it's not set up for dinghy tow yet. Although first off, Hollywood racks, uh, bike rack. I got this because we're eventually going to get Rachel an e-bike uh, like mine, and this will hold two 85-pound e-bikes. Um, also, the car is plugged in to the RV. Plugged into the RV. Can you even understand that? <laughs> this is like our runabout. This is our shuttlecraft, <laughs> or the main, the main, uh, I guess, uh, ship. So Galileo and Enterprise. I mean, if you want to super geek out about it. <laughs> Always. Of course, you want to share what kind of uh, range we get with that electric, the electric motor. I mean, the first 20 miles is going to be super efficient. <laughs> but still. I, mean, I did so much research on these cars, but I did not pay attention to... I did not pay attention to what the electric range was. I just got super excited about the fact that it had an electric range at all. So, whatever, 20 miles. It gets us a little bit, so it's good. <laughs>